No, and I'll hit this one. No, Amy's still here. Yep, yes, I am. Ladies and gentlemen, how are you doing out there? This is Jeff Leaf, and I'll tell you what, we're having a little technical Martin difficulties, Miller. but we're working on it. Welcome to the Cleveland Sports 360 Show with your host, LG. And hey. hopefully this is going to work out all fine out for us. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Cleveland Sports 360 Show. Mute that music, Mr. Leaf. We're going to have an action-packed show tonight coming live all the way from Chicago, Illinois. It's Amy Louise Williams, uh, the sports producer extraordinaire. She's going to join us on the phone. Oh, stop. We got Bart Zeller coming all the way from the desert out there in Arizona. We got Mark Madsen. This guy's a performer. He's been performing for over 35 years. We got baseball writer Charles Sledge going to join us a little bit later. And I don't know if Amy got hooked up or not with jenna lewis the very oh, first no. i'm gonna throw some things at you guys like you have no idea so <laughs> that's that's what you're famous for amy <laughs> jenna lewis the very first winner of survivor she was a little bit yeah. tied up when amy was well what exactly was she doing again amy when you were talking to me earlier well i wouldn't say tied up um uh, she was breastfeeding in the hospital i don't know i mean what did she just have yeah, a baby I'm not ask personal questions you no, know. But she's she's but she's actually in the she hospital just had a baby like three weeks ago so. wow i didn't realize it was that that short of a yeah. time ago yeah oh she's tied up with the newborn then that's that's very yeah, hectic exactly but i mean she's willing to to get on the phone in fact she'll probably call in but um well we'll take so them right as now, they come i don't know We'll see. But so how are you doing, Amy? What are you doing? What are you doing this winter? Are you getting geared up for baseball pretty soon or what? Well, it's not really winter. It's like 50 degrees here, so it's very odd. Well, technically Chicago. technically speaking, it's winter time. I mean, we passed December 21st. Uh, obviously, the world, the world didn't end. Were you, were you uh, crapping in your pants at all, worried about the world? Oh, well, that's a great word. Um... Was I crapping in my pants? Um, yes, probably a lot. I thought you were down there in Florida having a good old time, and uh, and you were going to get naked on the beach for the end of the world that day. I remember seeing a picture of you on the internet. What? Didn't you say you were going to ride your bike nude on the beach or something, and the police were giving you a hard time down there in Florida by the end of the world day? <laughs> All right, clicking. Look, here, here, here's the deal. Now, you need to spill something. Come on, give me something. What do you want? Well, I mean, I just pretty much told you, I, well, I didn't really crap on the beach at all. Not but. crap on the beach. You, I thought you were going to get naked and go on the beach for the end of the world day. Uh, well, that's fine. I, I remember but you saying all kinds something. of things were coming up that day. All right, is our first, I mean, is... Uh, is what? Bart on the line yet? Is, Bart? Yes, he is. Bart yeah. Zeller, all the way from the Arizona desert. How the hell are you, Bart? Happy New Year, my hey, friend. I'm doing just, just wonderful, and I'm a lot warmer than probably all the people in Cleveland and Chicago. Well, I believe that. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, this is Bart Zeller, the former manager of the Joliet Slammers from the Frontier League Baseball. In case you don't know this, we have our own Lake Erie Crushers on the west side of Cleveland Park. What the hell happened? Tell us why are you no longer the manager of a great team that you're holding trophies and pictures with? What what happened with the Joliet Slammers? Leaf, you got them pictures on the screen of Bart Zeller with the with the trophy? <laughs> I'll tell you what, what LG, uh, I'm trying you know, like hell to find them, like but I'm working on it. Scroll down. Uh -huh. Go ahead, Bart. Tell us what happened, man. Frankly, what happened is new ownership uh, uh, came in, uh, wanted to start fresh. Uh, I was told the last day of the season by our current owner that he was selling the team and that um, he wanted to uh, let me know that I should start looking for another job because the new owner wanted to bring in his own manager. Even after all the years that you were successful out there, this guy must have not known Bart Zeller's winning track record. Oh, it's 
stupid. It makes no sense. Absolutely. That's well, professional sports, folks. It's, it's, but, but that's right. And, and, I mean, we can be as biased as we want and we can be bitter, uh, sour grapes. But the truth of the matter is when you own it, when it's your team, you can do whatever you want. Now, Bart, we're going through a little bit about something coaching changes here in Cleveland. Obviously, uh, you know, you and I talked momentarily earlier on the phone this evening. Uh, why didn't you get out there and kick that Chip Kelly right in the ass for running around Jimmy Haslam, the new guy that paid $1.1 billion for the Cleveland Browns? What, what is your opinion why Chip Kelly wouldn't take the head coaching job for the Cleveland Browns? Well, Chip Kelly took a look at the Philadelphia Eagles and the Cleveland Browns roster, to be honest with you, Larry, and he said, where do I have the best chance of success? I'm looking at the Cleveland roster and how many of these guys could play on other teams? And he didn't come up with very many. So he <laughs> said, hmm, I better say no to Cleveland. And, and that was the same opinion he formed, uh, obviously, for the Philadelphia Eagles, too. Is that, is that Exactly. What? Now, Bart, because you've been in professional sports for a great number of years, let me get your opinion on something. Have you seen any of the Cleveland Browns play football this past season? You know what? I, I really only highlights, to be honest with you. That's a fair. I haven't really seen a full game. That's a fair question, a uh, fair answer to a question, because I'm not really sold on this Brandon Whedon guy. I mean, he was here. Here's something you do know about, though, Bart Zeller. You played professional baseball. Whedon was drafted by the New York Yankees. He spent six years in the minor leagues, and he never quite made it to the pitcher that the Yankees drafted in the first round of the high school. Uh -huh. Uh, you know, uh, what, sure. what do you say about a guy that couldn't really make it into baseball pitching? He hurt his shoulder, and now he's going to be the Cleveland Browns running back that came to the, I mean, a quarterback and came to the team with already a shoulder injury, man. How, how long do you yeah, think I mean, we I, actually got with a 29-year-old you know, guy? Anymore with surgery, Larry, you can, get, you can get anything taken care of. Take Wilson, the quarterback from the Seahawks. Fantastic he guy. He played professional baseball. Right. And... Didn't do very, you know, didn't do as well as he wanted, so he went into football. And I think if you look in past years, you'll see guys that tried to, to play baseball, couldn't do it. They went into another sport and they did okay, or vice versa. Maybe somebody like Bo Jackson, who played football and then he went into baseball. Um, but it's a, it's a tough grind if you're a pitcher and you've got a bad, sh bad shoulder. Absolutely, and I'm just wondering how long this shoulder's going to last for the Cleveland Browns. The guy's 29 hey, years Larry, old. Larry, but Larry, by the way, 44 days before they say pitchers and catchers report. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's your opinion on Terry Francona taking over the helm of the Cleveland Indians? I think that's a great move. I think that Larry, I, to be honest with you, I think Terry Francona got screwed royally when they got rid of him in Boston. Um, he's a great baseball guy. Good players love to play for him. And all that crap about drinking in the clubhouse and letting them do that in the clubhouse was BS. Um, some writers got hold of it. Some, some sour grape players said something, and they wrote them out on the rails. And uh, you're going you're gonna to really be excited with uh, Francona as the manager in Cleveland. The people should really enjoy that. Now, Bart, where did you do your minor league career again? Refresh our listeners' memories. Yeah, I, I was uh, nine years with the St. Louis Cardinals, catcher, uh, made probably every uh, stop along the way from uh, C-ball, B-ball, A-ball, double-A, triple-A, and luckily enough, I made the major leagues. And there was a guy in front of you uh, that gave you a bit of a hard time, right? Yeah, a kid by the name of McCarver, an 18-year-old phenom that really never... Never, then, then finally when they got rid of McCarver, I thought I might have a chance, but they got a guy named Joe Torrey. That's and, the guy. Uh, and then uh, Ted Simmons came in. So, <laughs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, Bart Zeller, the former manager of the Joliet Slammers, the Lake Erie Crushers, uh, one of the teams they play from the west side of Cleveland in the Frontier League. So, Bart, tell us, where can we look forward to seeing Bart Zeller when summer yes, hits in 2013? Ask it. You, 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 can, you can look forward to seeing me in uh, 30 miles from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, in a city called Washington, Pennsylvania. No kidding. Um, We're going to have to take a and, ride uh, out there and I'm see gonna be, you, man. I'm going to be working with a guy, Chris Bando, who oh, is my goodness. Sal Bando. Right. And uh, Chris had nine years in the big leagues, and uh, right. so he was a catcher. And uh, I'm really looking forward to that. And I, I might tell you that uh, I know Amy is a 
real booster of the Frontier League, but Frontier League's been in existence 20 years. Um, if people really enjoy baseball, they should get out and see a Frontier League baseball game because you're going to see kids that are 27 and under that play the game like people want it to be played. It's affordable. They can get good entertainment, see the baseball games, and have a good time with their families. Well, Bart, we're right across the street now, our new studio right here, streamingsportstalk.com. We're exactly across the street from the Lake County Captain Stadium. It's a minor league affiliation for the Cleveland Indians. Oh. So, uh, wow. you know, when you come over here to play the Lake Erie Crushers, uh, don't forget to give me a call this summer. I'd love to get you live in the studio here and do a little oh, bit of a that's, show. That's a Fantastic. promise. Yeah. Larry, that's uh, a promise. I guarantee I will do that. Uh, you know, I, I just enjoy you to dad to no end. I, I listen to your broadcast when I'm on the road after I was on your show last summer. I started listening to you. I think you do a great job. Well, thank you very much, Bart. I do the best I can with what I have to work with. Sometimes we got Larry, morons. Larry, so do I, and sometimes you know. <laughs> it ain't good enough. <laughs> I'm getting the bird flipped out in the uh, producer back there. I, I was going to tell you, we have, we have a loose cannon behind the wheels of steel tonight. It's his first time. He's a little nervous. So, uh, so Bart, uh, tell me, man, what, what did you think when the new ownership took over and they let a guy with your experience, uh, you know, walk and, and leave town? Uh, you can't imagine that this guy's going to experience the same kind of success a Bart Zeller was able to get with the Jelly at Slammers, could you? No, and, and here's the thing about it. I mean, you, you, I'm a grown man. I've been through business. I've been through eight years of minor league baseball as a coach and manager. And, Larry, I was hurt. I was disappointed um, when I heard the news. I couldn't believe it. I thought I had done an outstanding job. Well, outstanding. That's well, your record word. speaks. I thought I did a very good job. Hey, your record um, speaks I for had, it, for the outstanding part. You know? I, I had uh, great players. The players left to play for me, and I had a good coaching staff, and I was looking forward to the 2013 season, and to be honest with you, uh, I almost cried and uh, just uh, couldn't believe that this was happening. Well, I got to tell you, you'd be working with the Bandos. Those are a fine organization of a family right there. Bob Bando lives here in the Cleveland area. He's very, very good friends with one of my younger, my younger brothers. Uh, so, uh, oh wow, that's great. Yeah, and I remember when the Bandos played for the Cleveland Indians. So uh, that sure. was one of my favorite catchers. There was a Bando back in the uh, yep. '70s, right? Yeah, right around there. Yes, in the '70s. Right. So, I mean, the Bandos, I mean, I think that name's synonymous with baseball if you want to go that deep into it, you know? You so, know but, what, it's uh, probably a name not as famous as the Boone family, but pretty famous. Yeah, tell us again, Bart, what's the name of the team you're going to now? It's going to be the Washington Wild Things, just like uh, Major League when, uh, <laughs> when he was on the mound and he played Wild Thing. Rick Vaughn. Rick Vaughn. We got Rick Vaughn. Uh, we got an Indians fan here in the Cleveland area. He's called Joe Boo. You can find <laughs> Honest to God. Honest to God, Bart. Look up Joe Boo. Look up Joe Boo on Facebook, Bart. He's a hell of an oh Indians God. fan. But, but I got to tell you something, Larry. It's so exciting because, not, not to rub it in, but the sun's out. Um, you know, you guys in Chicago. I was just in Chicago for the, the American Baseball Coaches Convention. And it was 17 degrees, and I was freezing, and I'm still thinking 44 days, and it'll be spring training, and people really start talking about the real base, the real game, the real national pastime, which is baseball. Absolutely. Now, where do you guys do your spring training, Bart? Well, unfortunately, I got to go to Washington, Pennsylvania, <laughs> because that's where we hold it. And uh, luckily enough, we have uh, AstroTurf, so uh, we don't have grass, and so... Uh, you know, we're looking forward to at least being able to get our time in, but it'll be cold. There's no doubt about it. Now, let's just go back to Francona for one second. I want to get your opinion on something, Bart. Do you think with the payroll difference coming to the Cleveland Indians that Francona is going to be able to put the same kind of a quality team on the field that he did with the unlimited amount of bankroll he had in Boston, or do you think we're up against the wall still with money? No, I think I think you're not, you're not up against it. I think that Francona will get players, younger players, that aren't making huge amounts of money to play the game hard, to play the game with an aggressive style. And that's what the people want. And that kind of stuff wins ball games. Well, that's, that's so what's... I'm not, I'm, I don't, I'm not enamored. You know, the Yankees have had the highest payroll for 
10 years. Absolutely. They don't have many World Series to show for it. So it's not always about money. It's always about the team that, uh, you know, goes out and plays a game right. And I'm going to say one more thing about my alma mater, uh, St. Louis Cardinals. When La Russa left the Cardinals, when they lost Pujols, everybody said the Cardinals were going to go into the toilet. And you know what? It didn't happen because they had good players, players that played the game hard. Well, I got to tell you, uh, you know, Bart, you have a point there. And one of the things about the New York Yankees is Steinbrenner's dead. So once Steinbrenner died, uh, the, the, the fear element may be missing from the Yankees organization. Absolutely, so. <laughs> you're right. So who the hell knows what's going to happen in New York. But listen, Bart, thanks for joining us tonight. We're going to let you go. Uh, uh, I'll talk to you soon. I wish you all the best of luck in Washington. I hope so. I wish you and your staff a very happy New Year. I hope everybody stays healthy. And, Larry, I look forward to our next time together. Absolutely. And I really, really give you an open invitation. When you're going to come to the Cleveland area, stop by. We'll do a live show with you in the house. Why would anyone go to the Cleveland He has area? to. He's got to play the Lake Erie Crushers. Larry, really, I will do it, and I'll even buy you a Coke. <laughs> Wait a minute. i got to jump in here. Come Sounds on, great. Really? Why would anybody come, come to the Cleveland area? Yeah. Well, well, thanks for joining us, Bart. Really Cleveland? Okay. That's what that's what That's what Amy says all the time. <laughs> hey, we're gonna take a short break. When we come back, we're gonna have more right here live from the Cleveland Sports three sixty show. That was Bart right, Zeller. Thank you. Take care, Bart. Have a great yeah. night. Well good right. luck to Bye-bye. you, buddy. Bye. Bart, thank you very much. We're gonna talk to uh, Mark Madsen when we come right back with more of the Cleveland Sports him. 360 show and Amy Louise Williams. Don't turn that dial. Stay right here. StreamingSportsTalk.com. Oh my God! Funny. Hello. Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back with the show everybody loves, the Cleveland Sports 360 Show, with your host right now, LG. And let me put him back on, and I'm going to try to figure this out. Hey, hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome oh, I back. I hear you, LG. Okay, mute your mic. We got problems back there, folks. We got a, we got a beer guzzling alcoholic <laughs> It's trying to run the wheels of steel tonight. No, he's actually doing a great Dad job. Dad did it. I'm kicking your ass. Hey, don't swear on this show. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Cleveland Sports 360 show. Live on the phone, we have Amy Louise Williams. Amy, you still with us? Hello, Amy. You got it muted? Ladies and gentlemen, we're having a little technical difficulties. That's what happens. Unmute seven. People. There you go. Can you hear me, Amy? Mm-hmm. I'm here. What's up? Hi, Amy. How are you doing? Hey. Hey, I'm still breathing, so we're all good. That's all that matters. Every day, another yeah, breath. True. God God graces us mm-hmm. with life. Hey, do we have uh, Mark Madsen on the phone? You certainly yeah, do, Larry. I'm here. How you doing, Mark? I'm doing fine. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mark Madsen. He's a entertainer out of the Chicago, Illinois area with over uh, 35 years of experience uh, as a singer, a musician, an entertainer, 
He sings it all from pop to rock, from uh, swing to the blues. That's that's quite a repertoire you have there, Mark. Tell us, how did you get into singing all these different styles of music? Well, I had the very good fortune to uh, grow up in a very musical family. My father was a musician, and uh, I had wonderful aunts and uncles and uh, all sorts of interesting people in the Chicago area that exposed me to a lot of a, a, a large uh, uh, array of music from a very early age, and a lot of it stuck to me. So tell us, Mark, uh, what's your favorite style of song? Are you like a Sinatra? I mean, I've seen some photos of you with the big band behind you. Uh, i seen you playing guitar. It looked like maybe you had a little swing trio type of thing going on there. What, what's that all about, man? You're right on the button. Uh, I grew up listening to all the greats of uh, Sinatra, probably at the top of the heap. But the first guy I remember hearing when Pardon I was a the pun, was right? was the great Nat King Cole. <laughs> Nat King Cole. And, uh, I remember my 25. father. When I was a little kid, my father, well, first of all, my father was a great vocalist before he passed. And uh, he played the role, uh, the lead role in Guys and Dolls in the pajama game. He was into the theater type of thing, you know? And, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Nat King Cole was always, always playing in my house growing up as a kid. And I have to say, I don't know if there is a better voice that has graced our ears yet than Nat King Cole. I mean, and his daughter, Natalie Cole, too. They were both uh, blessed from above with those vocal cords, obviously, right? But both very, very wonderful, wonderful singers. Yeah. So uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, Mark. Where are you working these days? Well, right now I'm playing at a place here in Chicago on the northwest side uh, that are, uh, called the Gale Street Inn owned by an uh, eclectic restaurateur uh, promoter of the arts named George Cazares. He's uh, uh, involved in his, in his business and has me come in and perform there uh, Wednesday and Thursday nights uh, through the winter. Uh, we were out there last year for uh, six or seven months, but then he got uh, all fired up about his theater, which is right up the street, called The Gift Theater, which is a wonderful uh, um, up-and-coming theater house on the northwest side. And uh, George does a lot of work for the arts on the northwest side of Chicago. Sounds fantastic. I mean, Chicago's a great theater town, and there's a lot of places that you can play. You know, Cleveland used to be known for having live music and a lot of live venues. We actually lost a lot of that, Mark. Uh, it's not well, the great... You've had the same problem Chicago has had, but you have a wonderful uh, emporium there called Night Town. Oh, absolutely. I've... Jim Wadsworth. I've, uh, I've frequented in Night Town a few times. Uh, it's a great place to see a show. It's an intimate venue. Uh, I used to take, uh, you know, believe it or not, uh, Mark, I play the drums. And the music okay. we use here on the Cleveland Sports 360 show is my live original band. And, uh, well, good for you. And uh, one of the guys I studied drums with, maybe you even know the fella, his name was Bob McKee. Have you ever heard of Bob McKee? No, I'm, a, I'm familiar with another fellow from Ohio named Paul McKee, but maybe they're related, but he was a trombone player. Yeah, Bob McKee was a great, uh, great drummer. He did the Mike Douglas show for a great number of years, and he was actually good friends with Gene Krupa at one time. And, uh, uh -huh. Gene Krupa's from the I Chicago area, right? I remember Jerry Gibbs' band on, on uh, Mike's show. Yeah, but uh, was, uh, wasn't Gene Krupa from a Chicago area? Yes, he's he, uh, he's a uh, Winnetka. He's the big noise from Winnetka. Right. So you know, there's a lot of famous dudes that came out of oh, Chicago. Oh God, all the snobs are from Winnetka. <laughs> That's Amy. <laughs> Is that where you live, Amy? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, no, no. I have no. to jump in here. I'm in love with Amy. Not yet. Amy, I love you. Uh, well, yeah. how could you not, Leaf? But it basically, yeah, Mark, yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit. Uh, I saw you playing the guitar. Is that your main instrument? Well, I started as a drummer. I, I, when I was a little boy, when I was going to grow up, I was going to become Buddy Rich. So oh, I, absolutely. And I'd heard Gene Krupa and so on and so forth. I studied uh, here in Chicago and uh, uh, played drums in my father's band, but I always played the guitar because my father was a guitarist. And when I was about 19 years old, uh, I, I, I was doing both at the same time, but I thought, I'm going to play guitar more. I think I can get more chicks. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm the opposite. I, 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 
When I grew up and I was playing the drums, uh, I, I liked hiding behind that big drum set. I didn't really like to be out front like a guitar player or a vocalist. Yeah, but after after I started playing guitar more often, I, I realized it's the drummers and the saxophone players that get all the chicks. They get the chicks, huh? Yeah, right. Wow. Amy, what's your opinion on that? What's your favorite part of the band, Amy? Uh, Jeff Leaf. Are you talking to me? Yeah, we're asking you a question. Well, what? What's my favorite part of the band? Absolutely. If you had to go out and date a uh, musician, which one would it be? Gosh, I don't even... I obviously haven't even thought about it. I, I Honestly, I don't have an answer. Amy? I don't know. I mean, I guess... Well, just remember, Amy, the drummers carry the, the big sticks, and they can keep the beat oh, right. Oh, you did not just say that. I absolutely said it. <laughs> I mean, big sticks. Mark, well, you know that, right? The drummers carry the stick. And uh, and and Without we doubt. keep the beat better, right? We gotta we gotta be steady. So you know, I mean, the I'm guitar not a band player. Person. I mean, I'm not. I really don't care. <laughs> but, I mean, I honestly, I, I don't. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, honestly, I'm not all about that. But now, I have to tell. Well, I mean, I'm in love with, of course, the guy you have right now. I love him. He's brilliant, and I wish he would talk about his brain a little bit. Because he is smarter than, trust me, anyone I've ever known in my life. <laughs> That's awful well, nice of you to say, Amy. Quantum physics? Really? <laughs> Tell us a little bit about he that, Mark. How did, how did you get into quantum physics playing music? Well, music and uh, mathematics, you know, they've always had a lot to do with each other. So uh, one, one leads into the other. Absolutely. I mean, you've got to be no, able to no. count. That's not normal. That's weird. Well, that's Weird. a, a Nobody very... Nobody understands it. No one gets it. It's, just, it's, it's odd. They must have made Amy try to take a class in college, right, Amy? Did you have to take physics in college, Amy? Oh, <laughs> I, somehow I can't imagine that. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> so tell us, Mark, what do you do mathematically? Are you, uh, are, I mean, you just have a love for math, or do you do something with that on the side? I actually, in addition to, to uh, uh, being an entertainer here in Chicago, I do work as a, a what they call a process analyst. Uh, what happened was I got involved in computers for music pre-production back in the 80s uh, it, when the MIDI explosion happened with the music industry. And uh, I didn't know what I was doing, of course, with computers because I'd been a musician my entire life then. And uh, my mentor in that was a financial systems guy. So I ended up... Uh, Getting involved, getting involved in computers for both things, and um, it continues from time to time that somebody rents out my brain for that other stuff. So, <laughs> so what kind of a process analyst are you? What what processes do you analyze? Well, um, it, it 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 varies. I mean, I've I've done it on a large scale for uh, uh, large national banks. Um, there was a, one of the banks in Chicago had a used to have a mortgage service center there that they needed all manner of processes analyzed for. But I also uh, have worked for law firms and uh, retail businesses and so on and so forth. Wow, it seems interesting. So, Mark, tell our listeners how can they follow Mark Madsen if they so choose to do so. Uh, the like most people these days, the best place to go is uh, Facebook. Um, if, if you go in there and you look for Mark Madsen, the singer from Chicago, you'll find me quickly. My pages there are wide open. Uh, there's also markmadsenworld.com uh, on the World Wide Web. And um, check out your local emporium. You never know, I might show up. Yeah, and, uh, and, and give a shout out one more time to where you're performing so people can come out and see you. The Gale Street Inn in Chicago Avenue at roughly Milwaukee and Lawrence. Uh, it's across the street from the Blue Line stop at Jefferson Park. You can come out there on Wednesdays and Thursday nights. I'm there from 5 to 9. You'll enjoy the food, the booze, the company, and the music. Well, there you have it, folks. If you're in the Chicago area, get in your car, drive over, grab a taxi, take the uh, train, however you got to get there. But get there and see Mark Madsen 
performing live Wednesday and Thursday nights for quite a while, I guess. And uh, Mark, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule and joining us here on the Cleveland Sports 360 show. I really appreciate it. And hopefully we'll be talking to you soon. The uh, the plug there in Cleveland, I hope I get out to Nighttown soon. Hey, if you ever come to Nighttown, man, find me on Facebook, send me a little note, and I'll be glad to come up and join you. I love that place, man. You bet I will. Go Irish. There you have it, folks. Go (laughs) Irish. He's voting for Notre Dame. All the way from here. Thank you, Mark. Have a great evening. We'll talk to you soon. There you go, folks. If you're in the Cleveland Heights area, get to Nighttown. It's a nice, intimate little spot to go and catch some live music. Uh, We're going to be right back with more of the Cleveland Sports 360 show. Don't go away. Amy Louise Williams is still on the line with us. We're going to take about a one-minute commercial break. We'll be right back right here live on StreamingSportsTalk.com.
Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Cleveland Sports 360 show. We've had an action-packed, filled show tonight with Amy Louise Williams, all the way from Chicago, Illinois. Bart Zeller joined us from the Arizona desert. Mark Manson, the entertainer, singer all around the Chicago area. And right now, joining us live on the phone is author Charles R. Sledge. Uh, He works for a, a company writing books. And uh, he he wrote a book called the base a uh, 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 batter's out. The batter's out baseball network. How you doing, Charles? I'm doing fine. How how are you, uh, Larry? I'm doing great. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Charles. Well, I, I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I grew up in a small town uh, called Braddock, uh, PA. It's actually the home of the uh, Pittsburgh, uh, the uh, Braddock Grays, Hello? the Homestead Grays. And uh, tell us a little bit about and, your uh, book, uh, uh, Batters Out, Charles. So I, I've... Uh, Get back on a conference call. Pardon me? Tell, tell us a little bit about your, uh, about your book. Well, uh... Through coaching uh, Little League Baseball throughout the years, I spent like 31 years in coaching. So, And after all those years, I guess the kids uh, gave back because I care. And so I decided to write a, write a book on defense, how to play defense. And I named it The Batters Out. And the book be written, we, we all understand that no hitters are hard to come by, but shutouts are possible. So if defense is played properly where your teammates are backing each other up, then somewhere along the base pads, the batter should get out or be out. That's for creating the setup. So I wrote this book on baseball called The Batters Out Baseball Training Manual to teach parents, coaches, and kids the proper way of playing the defense side of baseball. So, Charles Sledge, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, you're, you're obviously a Pittsburgh Pirates fan. I, I seen some pictures of you wearing your Pirates jersey at the PNC ballpark over there in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, right? Yeah. Um, Amy. And Amy yes, is back I'm on the from, line. I'm uh, from Pittsburgh, and I grew up in, playing baseball my life, you know, and I'm, I'm a college graduate. I graduated from the Art Institute of Pittsburgh before uh, joining the military, I had a baseball career. I actually tried out for the Pittsburgh Pirates in 1975 before they got Omar Marino and Frank Travaris. And then I decided to uh, serve my country. So I joined the military, spun six years in the military. On return, I became a Little League baseball coach. Fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, on the phone all the way from Pennsylvania is author Charles R. Charles R. Sledge and from Chicago, Illinois, Amy Louise Williams. Amy, are you back with us? Mm-hmm. What happened? You fell off the phone? What, what, what happened over there? Yeah, I, yeah, I fell <laughs> off the phone. No, I'm right here. <laughs> okay, I'm glad you're here. Jenna Lewis is up next, babe. So, hey, Jenna, we're doing the best we can. Survivor. She's a survivor. Jenna Lewis is joining us, the very first winner of Survivor. So, Charles, you got this book, A Batter's Out. It's actually a training guide to help these young baseball players learn the game. Isn't that correct? Charles? Hello, Charles? Yes, this book is... Yes, this book is exactly about teaching uh, young kids how to play. It's basic. It's very simple. It's actually, you know, a lot of people, a lot of kids don't read today, so it's actually comprehensible to where is a map that tells you exactly what to do. So, Charles, where can uh, where can our trying to learn how to read? It's very simple and basic. Where can our viewers get the book? 
13 this book is written for. <laughs> Tell our viewers where the uh, where the uh, where they can pick up a copy of A Batter's Out. Well, you can get a copy of A Batter's Out any, at any bookstore. Amazon, uh, Barnes and Nobles has the book. Also, Arthur House is the publishing house where everyone and all the listeners can get a 30% discount at Arthur House. I would prefer that you save some money uh, due to the economy and grab a copy from the Arthur House bookstore. Well, there you have it. Hold on a second, Charles. Hey, Amy, we can hear you having another conversation on the air. Please mute your other telephone, Amy. <laughs> Amy? Amy? Amy Louise Williams, we can hear you carrying on another conversation. That's blondes for you, Charles, isn't it? <laughs> Unbelievable. Yes, we're live on the air, and Amy's having a conversation, I believe, with Jenna Lewis from Survivor. Can we tap into her and listen to what's going on over there? Maybe we should. It could be more interesting than baseball, but I don't know if there's anything more interesting than America's favorite pastime. Right, Charles? Yes, yeah, so uh, Larry, you're you're out of you're out of uh, Cleveland. Absolutely, I uh, was born and raised in Cleveland, Ohio, and uh, we're interested to see what Terry Francona is going to do for the Cleveland Indians coming up this year. Yes, yes, can we still talk while Amy and him is next next door to you? Yeah, we can definitely talk. Uh, uh, Amy, can you hear me? Amy, Amy Williams, Earth. Amy, can you hear us? Yes. Amy. Amy, Thank Amy. You so much. Wow. See, she's on another phone, obviously, and she well, doesn't realize that her other phone is being broadcasted all over the yeah, entire yeah, world. But Charles, right now. Charles, what is your thought of the Cleveland Indians? Uh, okay, hello, Amy. When you're talking there to somebody is, else, Amy. we could hear you okay, on the um, on the air. Tim Riggleman is calling in now. Who? Oh, we, we got. This is good. This is good. Jim Riggleman, who used to play for the Cubs and manage and do all kinds of stuff, so he's calling in, like, right now. Okay, well, we'll get him live on the air as soon as he calls in. Uh, uh, Charles, what's your opinion about the uh, Cleveland Hello, Indians? I'm here. Charles. Yeah. Uh, who, who's listening to me right now? We all are. The entire Charles world's uh, listening Larry. to you. Okay, fine. Larry. Jim Riggleman is calling in right now. Jim Riggleman, who used to manage for the Cubs um, and... Uh, uh, many other people. Uh, okay. Other, I don't know. You guys do your research on your own. I mean, <laughs> um, so well, we have Charles. Right we so have Charles. Let's finish up with Charles. Fired from uh, Baltimore. Um, I don't know, Larry. I mean, do you know anything about Riggleman? Well, I know he was a manager in the Major League Baseball, but uh, I don't follow uh, the Cubs real closely, as, as closely right. he was as... he manager of the uh, Nationals. For Washington, right? Yeah, Amy, I'm on here. Oh, there we go. Yay. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's finish up real quick with Charles Sledge. Charles, again, uh, tell us, uh, uh, once again, where can people find your book? <laughs> oh, God. Again... Again, uh, you can find the Batters Out Baseball Training Manual at Barnes and Nobles, Amazon.com. But we would prefer that you get it from our publishing house, which is Arthur House. Uh, you save uh, 30% there, and uh, we all know we like to save money. And there you have it, the Batters Out Baseball Training Manual. It's uh, written for parents, coaches, and kids, and it Charles, teaches the you. basic side of defense, uh, the particulars on how to back up your teammate. Well, there you have it, folks. Charles Sledge was good enough to join us tonight on the Cleveland Sports 360 show. We got Jim Riggleman all the way from uh, wherever he is now. Where where are you at? Where are you at, Jim? I'm in Florida right now. Thank you. Well, we know you're not still in the Chicago area. Uh, uh, tell, us, uh, tell us a little bit about your background, uh, who you played for, who you managed. Uh, obviously, you were with the Washington Nationals a little bit, a little bit with the Cubs. Uh, tell us a little bit about your background for our viewers out there. Well, there, yeah, I, you know, I, I signed a long time ago as a minor league player. I played for seven years, and then I was fortunate enough to uh, stay in the game as a, as a minor league manager. I did that for quite some time and had the great 
uh, pleasure of uh, coaching in the big leagues for the St. Louis Cardinals for a couple of years. Uh, went and worked for San Diego, managed the San Diego Padres for a couple of years, went to the Chicago Cubs. It worked in Cleveland one year. Uh, I've been everywhere. I've been to Seattle, Washington, uh, Dodgers, you know, a lot of clubs, like a lot of people in baseball, you know. Um, very few people have spent their whole career with one organization. And in my case, I've been with a lot of organizations. Absolutely. And it's tough to be a manager in Major League Baseball anymore as far as the turnover goes. And, and you're lucky to last a couple of years in one sport, uh, one, uh, one uh, city, I should say. But, uh, Mr. Riegelman, uh, let me ask you, what was your favorite team to manage in Major League Baseball? Well, you know what? That's a great question. Um, the, the, every, every, every experience I've had has been a, a good experience. I've enjoyed managing at each, each place. Chicago was particularly uh, fun in 1998. We went to the playoffs, and Sammy Sosa and Mark Grace and Kerry Wood, a lot of great stories came out of that particular oh, season. Wow. So if I had to nail it down, I guess I would say Chicago 1998. Well, that Sosa is a real character. It had to be an experience uh, managing a guy like Sammy Sosa. I mean, you don't get much more animated in baseball than him, do you? Mr. Riegelman? Well, Sammy was a great player, but, you know, <clears throat> yeah, can you hear me? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, Sammy was. Yeah, Sammy was a great player, and, and Sammy carried the load a lot for the ball club in terms of taken on the brunt of uh, the media that surrounded the club uh, when he was going for the home run record and so forth. And, you know, we were trying to get in the playoffs, so Sammy took on a lot of the uh, uh, stuff that the other players would have had to deal with. A lot of it was directed at Sammy, and Sammy loved it, and he handled it very well. Well, let me get your opinion on something. But being a big league manager throughout the 90s, uh, basically uh, you saw all these battles come about, about these steroids that started happening throughout baseball. Do you think that steroids have tainted the game of baseball? Uh, no question. Yeah, definitely it, it has tainted the game. Um, but, you know, I, I think that, Baseball has tried to clean it up and has done a great job cleaning it up. So, you know, it was an era there in the uh, in the 90s in particular that, um, you know, probably started a little bit in the late 80s. Nobody knew what they were looking at and carried through the 90s, and it was kind of under the surface a little bit. But it, it certainly tainted the game. But, um, you know, a lot of players were doing it. I think, uh, you know, unfortunately – time hitters, but I think we've all come to know that a lot of pitchers were also using uh, substances that were enhancing their performance. So, uh, you know, it was just a, a, a time where it was, um, it was people were getting away with it. They tested the limits. They went, they went over the limits, and baseball cracked down on it finally, and I think we got a cleaner game due to it. Well, obviously, uh, we're talking to Jim Riegelman, uh, former manager of multiple baseball teams. What's Riegelman doing in 2013? Tell our viewers. <laughs> well, um, I'm working for the Cincinnati Reds. Uh, I'll be managing in Louisville. And um, my most recent assignment with the Reds was Pensacola. Uh, I had a great experience in Pensacola, Florida. The Reds double-A team is there, and that was the first year – that Pensacola has had a ball club, and it was just a tremendous experience. Uh, the fan turnout was great. Um, uh, the Reds were very happy with being in Pensacola. The, it's a great match there. Um, David Bell was managing AAA in Louisville, and he got an opportunity to go coach in the big leagues with the Cubs, so that AAA job was open in Louisville, and so they've asked me to go there and manage that club, and I, I very much look forward to doing that. Now, when a guy named Riegelman goes and shows up back down in the AAA baseball, are the players on the AAA level actually afraid of you or what? Well, we got a little bit of a bad connection. I, I, I think I, I, I get the gist of your question. Basically, you know, minor league ball players are trying to get to the big leagues. They, they don't really care who their manager is. They, uh, you know, they're going to go out and they're going to play and they're going to try to impress uh, 
everybody who's watching, uh, trying to impress the organization in general. They want good reports written on them. So, you know, it's uh, it's generally a hungry group of players that are going to try to go and do the best they can to get out of that league they're in and play in the big leagues. And so, um, you know, it's a great world baseball. It's, it's one tick away from the major leagues. And, um, uh, you know, Louisville has been a great minor league city in the past, will continue to be a great minor league city. So, as I said earlier, I'm really looking forward to it. Well, let me ask you one more question as far as, you know, you're working for the Reds organization. Obviously, that's in one corner of the state of Ohio. I'm in the other corner of the state of Ohio and born and raised in Cleveland my entire life. Uh, what, what is your opinion of Terry Francona taking over the reins of the Cleveland Indians? Oh, well, where is yeah, you've done a great job there getting here. You know, Cleveland Cleveland is going to be um, uh, very happy. You know, the, the players, the fans, the media. Terry's a first-class individual. He's, his track record speaks for itself. He's going to do a great job uh, on, on a personal level. Manny Acta is a very good friend of mine, and um, I wish things would have worked out better for Manny there. But that being said, um, you know, you can't, you can't do better than Terry Francona. This is Charles. I hear Terry. Terry grew up in uh, New Brighton, Pennsylvania, 30 miles from Pittsburgh, where I live. Yeah, well, I, you know, he comes from a great baseball family, and um, he's just a good good manager. You know, he knows the game inside out. He handles players tremendously. Players like playing for him. So I think uh, – Did we lose Jim Regelman? Years, it seems to be like the longest tenor uh, for a coach up there in Cleveland. Well, you know that that's the thing. When you know it's supply and demand. When you're Terry Francona, uh, they want you. You know they're going to want you, and if they're going to want you, they're going to have to make a commitment. And the commitment was uh, very strong from them. The commitment from Terry's end is very strong. So, yes. nothing but good things are going to come of it. Well, Mr. Riggleman, I got, I got. Let's let's let Jim go. No, no, I got one more question, Jim. This is a very serious no, question. Okay. No, listen to this one. When Francona signed the deal to be the Cleveland Indians manager, there was a clause put in that deal that gave Francona an out if they ever fired the front office people in Cleveland. Have you ever heard of that before in a major league baseball manager's contract? I didn't really catch what you said. What, what is the clause, Larry? When Frank Kona signed a deal with the Cleveland Indians, okay? Yeah. There's a clause in there that if Shapiro or Antonati ever gets fired, then Frank Kona can walk. So it was our opinion they brought Frank Kona into the Cleveland Indians organization to be a security blanket for the two front office people. Did you ever hear of that kind of a deal being made in Major League Baseball before? Well, yeah, that's that's unique. I never heard of that. But, um, and but you know, I, I guess I think from Terry's end, Terry's looking at it like uh, I want to know who I'm working for and I want to know who I'm communicating with on a daily basis. And, you know, that, that's a great situation for Terry. Yeah. And, um, um, you know, it's, again, it's supply and demand. Sometimes you, uh, when you want somebody bad enough, you've got to uh, make some concessions, and maybe that's one of the concessions that was made. Well, thanks so much for joining us tonight on the Cleveland Sports 360 show, uh, Mr. Riggleman. Best of luck to you and the Cincinnati Reds organization. Uh, obviously, the Thank Reds you. were on fire last year. Uh, they did a lot of good things, and uh, I was a little bit let down by the way they finished up into the playoffs. I thought they would have did a little bit better and uh, maybe made it to the World Series. Who knows what 2013 is going to bring. But, hey, God bless you. <laughs> Take care of yourself, and uh, thanks for joining us live on the yeah, Cleveland Sports 360 good. show. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Bye-bye. Thank you.
There you have it, folks. Amy Louise Williams puts a show together. We had Bart Zeller. We had Mark Madsen. We had Jim Regelman. We had Charles Sledge, author extraordinaire, the author of the book, A Batter's Out. Amy, what else you have in store for us this evening? Anything? Oh, good God. Well, I mean, Jenna was online. Is she still with us? No pun intended, but, I mean... (laughs) Did we lose her? Say it again. Did we lose her? No, Jenna Lewis was, like, literally, I think, waiting for you guys. Is she still with us? Well, you know what, LG, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, uh, we do definitely have about six minutes left, so you want to go ahead and do that? Is Jenna still with us? Jenna Lewis, are you on the line? I don't know. I don't know either. It's just me and you, Amy. Charles oh, Sledge, are you I still love with us? Jenna, are you kidding? Did we I lose her? Box. Well, what can I tell you? This is live radio. It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't yes, get any better. Charles Sledge is still on the line. Well, thanks for yeah, joining oh us, my Charles. God. I can't believe you put her on hold. We don't put anybody this on hold. This call does not deserve to be put on hold ever. We don't. Ever. We don't put anybody on hold. It was a conference call. When they talk, we listen. <laughs> That's how it works. Mm-hmm. Hey, Charles, we're going to cut you loose for coming up to the end of the show. But thanks for joining us on the Cleveland Sports 360 show, Mr. Sledge. And I'll be in touch with you real soon because I'm interested in talking to you about writing a few articles. If you're interested in that. Yeah, yes, Larry, thank you for having me on your show. I've enjoyed it. Amy, thank you, and hi up hey, there in Chicago. Nice. Yeah, it was what, fun. Where's Jenna? It was fun, just like you mentioned, and uh, uh, Larry, we'll you. keep in touch. Thank you very much, and, Mr. Sledge. Sure, I'll, I will post those articles to your page or whatever. Okay. That would be fantastic. Like, uh, uh, we're here to teach the world how to play baseball, particularly youth, on up. That's fantastic. It's great being on your show. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Oh, Sledge. Welcome. That was Happy it. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. Author Charles R. Sledge. Now, uh, Larry. Yes. Amy Williams. Uh, Larry. Amy. Uh, now, where's Jenna? Where in the world is Jenna? Well, I would assume she's in California somewhere right now. Maybe. maybe. Well, I mean, she's probably not real happy with me at this point, but that's fine. Well, where is All she? Right, we'll figure it out. That's fine. All right, well, Hello? it was a great show, so I'm happy. I hope you are as we well. We did a fantastic job, Amy. It's uh, You know, uh, people don't realize what it takes to put a show of this magnitude together. We had Bart Zeller. We had uh, Mark Madsen. We had the mm-hmm. great Amy Louise Williams. We had Charles R. Sledge. And we had G- yeah, uh, Jenna yeah, Lewis, yeah, but we lost great. her. I- I'll tell you, the first yeah. winner of Survivor. But you know what, Amy? Maybe next time we should start the show with Jenna Lewis. <laughs> what do you think of that? Oh, my gosh. I mean, actually, we could actually, like, plan something <laughs> so that we don't do it at the last minute. Um, okay. Well, there you have it. We'll have to put something together, and we'll have to make it up to Jenna. And you know what, Amy? When you have a brand-new baby, nature calls. So who knows? Maybe she Ew, had to go take that, care of don't business. Don't talk to me about children. Gross. <laughs> well, well, thanks for joining us. Uh, thanks for joining us on the show, Amy. Great, you guys were fun. It was a fun show. It was it was entertaining, and you know, I mean, people got um, information that they wouldn't have had otherwise. So it, it's good stuff. So there you go. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Amy. I really appreciate it. I'll be talking to you soon. Yeah, I mean, how many people are going to get Jim Riggleman? Only Amy Louise Williams. That's who's going to get her. Hey, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for joining the Cleveland Sports 360 show right here on StreamingSportsTalk.com. Coming up next, don't change that dial. We got Camille Rowell and hopefully Jesse Williams sitting in for Kenyon Johnson, who is out on assignment. We'll see you next week. Again, Monday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with another episode of the Cleveland Sports 360 Show. Thank you, God. Good night, and God bless. Outstanding. God.